Hi guys, welcome back. Um, better late than never, this is the January wrap up. I know it's like the first week of February. I need to get my life together. I say that all the time. Smash that dislike button and if you can tell that I put on false lashes for the first time because I don't think they look very good. Anyway, I read 15 books in January. Wow, okay. Billy's gonna say it doesn't count because some of them are graphic novels, but you know what? I say it counts. I put in the effort. I had emotional feelings. It counts. So, the first book that I finished this month, last month, January, was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I have resisted Marissa Meyer for a really long time. I don't know why. I think it's because um, everybody was talking about the Lunar Chronicles for a really long time, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna wait until she finishes and then I'll jump on it and then for some reason I picked up Renegades and I was like you know what this is what I'm gonna start with and I loved it I love Renegades I also started and finished Arch Enemies in January and I'm just starting Supernova now I, so I'm really excited to finish it I love them I rated them Arch Enemies I rated four and a half stars Renegades I, ra I <laughs> rated it at five stars just because it's a prime example of when the synopsis on the side of the book or the back of the book is not really representative of what's inside. Um, I don't know, I felt like the tone of what it said on the outside didn't match what was on the inside and I really, 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 really happy for it. They put like extraordinary abilities, extraordinary powers, whatever on here and it's plain and simple, it's superheroes. I love superheroes, I love Marvel, I don't know if you can tell, but I do. And yeah, I I highly recommend the Renegade series. I am going to read the Lunar Chronicles. I have Cinder sitting on my shelf in my bedroom, so I'm excited to start those once I finish Supernova. The next book I read in January was Sadie by Courtney Summers. So Sadie follows the story of a girl named Sadie. Her sister was just found dead in a field and her little sister was like her life. And so Sadie goes out on this adventure to find who killed her, who killed her little sister. And the second half of the book, because it's written in two different perspectives, one Sadie's, the other perspective is a podcast who's trying to figure out what happened to Sadie, if she's alive, if she's dead, if she ever found her sister's killer. And it was heavy, really heavy. I gave it four and a half stars just because um, I wasn't anticipating the content. And it was a really beautifully written really well executed. I loved it, but I dinged off a half star just because like it attacked me personally. There's just some triggers in there and I just, the five and a half stars is purely just because I won't reread, but five stars if you're looking for a great book. It's great. Just, it hurts to talk about. So trigger warning for anybody who's been through sexual assault or is triggered by sexual assault. Yeah. So, me, warning, warning on that one. The next book that I read is um, On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. Um, this is a graphic novel. I get books from the Libby app. You've probably heard me talk about it more than once. Um, and I don't really like reading books on the app. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to read graphic novels because it's a little easier for me to read on a screen. Um, on a Sunbeam was really gorgeous. It was really beautiful. I couldn't tell you what it's about because I, I don't remember because there wasn't a lot to go off of. It is a female-female romance, sci-fi romance, which I was excited about, but it just didn't... I don't think the story was executed very well. The artwork is gorgeous. I give it four stars just based on the artwork. So if you're interested in a sci-fi female-female graphic novel with a little bit of plot but lots of gorgeous <laughs> graphics, then pick up on a sunbeam. I really liked the artwork. The next book that I read is called One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. McManus. It is the second book of the One of Us is Lying series. She had another book, I think it's Two of Us Can Keep a Secret, that's in the same like vein as One of Us is Lying, but it's not a continuation. This one is a continuation with the characters from the first book. Now, um, it took a long time to get started. A lot of the characters are, the main characters are related to the characters from the first book, and it's been a long time since I read the first book, so I was kind of like, where am I? Who am I? Who are all these people? And that was my own fault. So I feel like that really affected the way that I read it. So I want to reread the first book and then reread the second book again. It also took a long time to get started. Now the first book 
I describe it as the breakfast club but with murder so five people go into detention only four come out the one who dies he had started this like gossip girly type blog where he would drop people's secrets on the internet and it would have a lot of damage so somebody in this the one of us is next started a similar thing um but it was purely anonymous everybody knew in the first book who was running that gossip girl type blog in the second book there's just um it's like truth or dare and you have to pick a dare and do something wild and outrageous or somebody the anonymous blogger is going to reveal a secret about you i want to say i got like halfway through the book before something interesting happened maybe even two-thirds and then i just like it was wild it was a really good twist but i have to say i completely just like trudged through that book i made myself read a chapter a day just so i could get through it and then once i got to that halfway two-thirds point that's when i just rocketed through the end of it and i gave it i want to say three and a half stars maybe four stars just because like i didn't devour it as quickly as the first one but i mean it's definitely something that if you liked the other two books that karen and mcmanus wrote and put out then you'll like this one as well if you're jumping into it for the first time just read <laughs> one of us is lying or two of us two of us can keep a secret yeah those are we love those the next book i read i borrowed from the library it's called anastasia and her sisters by carolyn meyer carolyn meyer it's a historical fiction novel about anastasia romanoff and her sisters olga marie and tatiana when i was little i was obsessed with the romanoff family i'm still kind of obsessed with the romanoff family this book is written kind of in like a confessional style as if Anastasia if she had a diary kind of her life between when she was I want to say like maybe 11 to when she was 16 when the Romanov family was all killed. This book was also a little bit tough for me to get through but I'm not a big fan of historical fiction but I was just like you know what I want to give this a try because I love Anastasia so much. There's a lot of facts based in it of course but there's also a lot of liberties taken. Um, it still hurt me a lot it hurt me a lot more than I thought it would, especially when the family <laughs> has to go into exile. I'm problematic because I will defend Tsar Nicholas until I die because he didn't want to be a Tsar and he was like, I really don't want to do this, y'all. And I just feel like if there was a little communication, we all could have been a little happier from that, but whatever, what do I know? Anyway, I gave that, I want to say three and a half stars, maybe four, three and a half stars because I wouldn't recommend it to anybody else unless you like Anastasia because that was literally where my interest was. Next book I read, another graphic novel, The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. I love this. Five stars, 18 stars, a million stars. I love this so much. As soon as I finished it, I hopped on the internet and I bought myself a copy. It was expensive, but I don't care. I loved it so much. So I recommend it to everybody, even like I work at a bookstore and I'm like, you have to read this. It's so cute and I want to die. Like, I love it. Okay, so 100, 100 Nights of Hero is about, if you're familiar with the Arabian Nights kind of format, you know that like the wife of the Scheherazade and the wife of the king, emperor, whatever, tells stories for a thousand and one nights to stay alive. So similar concept, but two men are having a discussion about what they want in women problematic as hell and one of them goes oh my wife is so chaste and so wonderful like I haven't even taken her virtue yet and the other one goes huh, well I could do it and the other one goes oh well I'm gonna go away for a hundred nights and you know if you can get her virtue then you can have her the other man goes oh hooray this sounds not problematic at all so he goes over to seduce the wife and little does he know that the wife is a lesbian and she's in love with her maid hero and she manages to trick this man into listening to hero stories for a hundred nights and the artwork is adorable like is it you know i would i would fucking hang it up in a museum it's amazing this is it the artwork is really cute <laughs> the dialogue is really cute as you can tell female female romance we stand and it just ties everything up really really neatly in a bow and I keep picking it up to reread it even though I have a million other things to read it is really cute um if you can find it anywhere at ebook I would read this 100 times over and I wish I can go back in time and take it away from my brain 
so I can reread it again for the first time because it was so cute. I think I read it all in one sitting. <sighs> I love it. Anyway, next. The next book I read was Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. I did not like it. I did a review on it. You can check that out. It's called Let's Talk About Infinity Sun, and that's all I'm gonna say. Moving on. The next book I read is another graphic novel. Um, it's tiny and adorable, and it's a children's novel, children's graphic novel, young reader novel, and I don't care. It counts as a book. Come for me. I will probably lose, but come for me anyway. It's called Mary Jo Beth and Amy, a graphic novel, a modern retelling, retelling of Little Women, and who is the artist? Right here, Terracero and Brie Indigo. She did the illustrations. It's adorable. Modernization nails it right on the head. Um, if you're familiar with the story of Little Women, it kind of takes it and just turns it upside down. They're all um, biracial, beautiful baby butterflies. And it's the first half of Little Women, not the second half. It was really cute and it still hurt. I know what's going to happen. I've read Little Women. I saw the movie. I've seen a lot of versions of that movie, of that book. I mean, and it still hurt. I know what's coming. I know it's coming. I see it. it. Still hits me. Still hurts. It still hurts. Really cute. Four stars. And the artwork is just so tiny and adorable. Last graphic novel I read is called Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. This is also female female romance. Um, this graphic novel is by Mariko Tamaki. And I also read this as an ebook from the library. Thank you, library. You saved me money. Um, it's the stories right there in the title. Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. Our main character keeps falling in love with a girl named Laura Dean. And she kind of strings her along. You find out that the main character is not a great person. And I love me a morally gray character. I want to say four stars. It's really cute. If you see it, pick it up. Or you could just, you know, read A Hundred Nights of Hero. I will never shut up about this. The next book I read is Her Royal Highness, the second royals book by Rachel Hawkins. That is a female-female romance as well. It follows our main character who goes to school in Scotland and her roommate is a princess. She's related to the family from the first royals book. I want to say it's called Prince Charming. And it's enemies to lovers. It's adorable. It hurts. The next book I read is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is the second book I've read by Christina Lauren, the first one being Autobiography. This book, oh my god, I, I love, I loved it. I don't like romance novels, but I think I just need great writing and fade to black because I don't like super graphic romance novels where they're like his, I'm sorry, no children, please for the next 10 seconds. Cover their ears. Go la 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 la. Um, his member entered her satin heat and I'm just like, it's like, it's, I don't, ooh, nobody's thinking this in their brains. I hate it. This like fade to black or just kind of like whoa, glazes over it. It will still being a little spicy, a little steamy and that's how I like it. Thank you. I just, maybe I'm just immature but I just don't like reading it like that. It just makes me go, oh, I don't like it. Anyway, the Unhoneymooners is about, um, I want to say, I can't remember their names because I read it in a day and it was great. But our two main characters, male, female romance, enemies to lovers, we got a straight romance here. I still liked it. Um, our two main characters have to go on a honeymoon together because the family, the couple who's supposed to take the honeymoon come down with a serious intense case of food poisoning and um shenanigans ensue and enemies to lovers is really cute also um our main character is really curvy her name is olive that i remember and i was like i feel this and she had qualms about like there's body image issues in this book and i i related to that i was like thank you for giving me something real. I, Christina Lauren gives me romance and substance. So I need to pick up another one of their books, just not the Beautiful Bastard series. I think I'm gonna pick up twice in a blue moon, maybe? We'll see, we'll see. I really liked it, five stars. 
would read again. You can tell I'm having some trouble. Some trouble. Triable. The next book I read was the first book of the Nevernight Chronicle by Jay Kristoff. I read this book because, <laughs> big surprise, Boston read book, reads books. Um, this is one of her favorite books and I wanted to read it. Um, I listened to it on, on audiobook which made it a lot easier to read because there was things in there that triggered, they trigger me a little bit. Um, I give that book a solid four stars. The world building is great. 18 out of 10. It's about this girl named Mia and she is trying to seek revenge for the death of her family, the horrible death of deaths of her family. And um, she goes to a school for assassins. If that sounds like your, your thing, do it. I was kind of in a weird mood when I read this so that might have affected my opinion of the book. I'm definitely going to read the second. I'm, I'm going to finish the whole series. Who am I kidding? I like it but I don't know. I don't love it. I don't know what's going on. It might just be me. Next book I read I got an early copy of this book from Book of the Month. It's called The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. And um, I believe it comes out on February 18th. I'm gonna talk about it more. I have a vlog coming out of it soon. It's about a girl who goes looking for her aunt who had disappeared like 20 years earlier, 30 years earlier, at the Sundown Motel in a very tiny town in New York. And there's ghosts and murder and I love it. If you like I want to say my favorite murder or any kind of murdery kind of almost true crime book you would like this book five stars five stars the next book i read i also read because of boston reads books is this a mandy channel or is this a boston reads books fan channel i do not know so birthday by meredith russo is an amazing book it should be required reading it hurts so good. I cried, I want to say the last 50% of the book. And if I could rate it more than five stars, I would. 20 million stars. Just cover this whole thing with stars because that book was so good. None of us deserve it, but we all should read it. So our two main characters, Morgan and Eric, um, have been best friends since they were like babies. And um, Morgan isn't comfortable in their body. And they live in like the armpit of Tennessee. And Eric is a sweetheart. Nobody, nobody on this earth deserves him. And it's basically their journey of their lives and the book checks in with them every year on their birthday until they're like 18. Um, required reading. I require you to read this book. Everybody should be required to read this book. It's a very important book and I cannot stress that enough. It's so good. I don't wanna say much more just because I cannot find the words in the English language to describe how much this book moved me and how much it helped me understand things. And I want to find more books like this. If you did not like this book, I want to know why. Um, but yeah, this book, 18 out of 10. Right in the meow meow. That wraps up this video. <laughs> it wraps up this video. Um, I already started reading this next month. I've read three books so far. It is... February 5th. So, yeah. Tell me what books did you read this month? Is there any on my list that you also read? Is there anything you're looking forward to in February? What am I looking forward to this month? I know the new Becky Albertalli, Albertalli book is coming out. The Yes, No, Maybe. I want to read that really badly. And I can't wait for the Sundown Motel to come out so I can start throwing at people. <laughs> Uh, customers at the bookstore because I just oh it's so good and I also need to convince my manager to order more birthday by Mer Meredith Russo anyway thank you for watching I really appreciate it um yeah have a good day you're amazing I feel like Regina George now <laughs>